what's up you're back thank you for coming back and checking out uh, my videos and uh, tonight we're going to be mod uh, summarizing module 5 in course 2 this is a very small uh, module and you should be able to get through it really quickly there's only about four lessons lesson 5 is just practice summaries lesson 1 talks about expenses for seller and buyer uh, we're gonna click on it and uh, it's a very small uh, lesson uh, there's nothing in the summary basically they say oh congratulations you completed this lesson so I'm just gonna go over go over this quickly so third-party expenses for a seller um, home selling process in, uh, entails several third-party expenses um, so some things like uh, home stager home staging is the process of making a home aesthetically attractive to potential buyers um, lender a seller may need to obtain ex expert ex advice from a lender to certain for certain aspects of the selling process for example if the seller wants to dis discharge a mortgage before the term has expired there is a discharge penalty and the seller would be required to pay the cost of discharging the mortgage a surveyor uh, a seller may require a surveyor to verify the size and extent of the current land ownership uh, the cost of a survey depends on the various factors such as the size of the property and if there is an old survey, survey in existent, existence. A lawyer. A seller will require the services of a lawyer to review the agreement of purchase and sale, note any deadlines to ensure the transaction proceeds as scheduled, respond to any questions or concerns received by the buyer's lawyer as a result of the title um, and non-title searches prepare and deliver statement of adjustments to the buyer fulfill any other requirements so legal fees uh, will range in price depending on the complexity of the transaction they include fees of the lawyers time and expedite expedite expenditures to address the transaction on behalf of the seller and then they talk about uh, additional additional expenses for the seller are basically HST capital gains HST related uh, to taxes include harmonized sales tax and capital gains tax HST is applicable on various uh, services associated with closing such as a lawyer's fee brokerage fee or remuneration capital gain tax is apl applicable to any capital gain realized on the sale uh, of a seller's rental or investment property or non principal residence Remuneration. Generally, the seller will pay remuneration owed to the both brokerages. The listing brokerage then shares the remuneration with corporate corporating brokerage, with when applicable, as stipulated in the seller representation agreement. Moving expenses basically means yeah you're gonna have to pay, um, pay to uh, uh, change. Uh, change your address, legal documents, driver's license, vehicle permits. The cost of moving may vary greatly depending on the moving uh, company selected. So it all depends on the seller. And then expenses related to adjustments made on clo closing. Adjustments are costs that are uh, allocated between the seller and the buyer on closing. It could be a debit uh, or credit to either party depending on the situation. I think that's the most important part so and then they talk about expenses for the buyer basically property inspector um, you may be required the services of a property inspector to learn the condition of the property appraiser or an appraisal is an act or process of estimating value and providing an opinion concerning that value a surveyor um, buyer may require a survey to identify any encro encroachments, improvement locations, or other issues that their lawyer believes would not be addressed by title title and insurance. Lawyer, a, lo a buyer will require the services of a lawyer to review the agreement of purchase and sale and to perform a title search, which verifies the seller's ownership of this property and identifies if there are any if there are any encumbrances against the title that will affect the buyer's ability to acquire a clear, free, and marketable title. So yeah, that's basically lesson one. Uh, another thing, same thing goes with the buyer. You have to pay land transfer tax, uh, remuneration, moving expense, and expense related to closing. Uh, 
moving on to okay land transfer tax and credits land transfer tax calculation of land transfer the land transfer tax uses a sliding scale of percentages based on the property value the lawyer will arrange uh, land transfer tax to be paid when the deed of the property is transferred to the buyer okay mm, yeah so that was lesson one let's exit this mod lesson and move on to lesson two lesson two talks about mortgage essentials uh, same thing they don't talk about anything in the summary it just says congratulations which we don't really need we need the summary but I guess they just want to congratulate us um, so let's go over the lesson see if we can find um, useful information so basically the two parties to a mortgage transaction are referred to as a mortgager mortgager Mortgager, I don't know how to say it. Hold on, mortgager, mortgager. So borrower and a mortgagee, the lender. The borrower gives the the mortgage as security for the loan, receives the funds, makes the required payments, and maintains possession and ownership of the property. The lender gives or lends the money and registers the mortgage against the property. Uh, types of mortgages there are legal mortgage uh, as a as the mortgage historically transferred the owner's interest in the land to the lender until the loan was repaid it was termed the legal mortgage as transferring title could only occur once equitable mortgage an equitable mortgage is commonly known as a second mortgage third mortgage or and so on this is sometimes used when a borrower requires additional funding but does not want to disturb the existing legal or first mortgage or mortgage or the mortgagee does not want to add uh, want does not want added risk by increasing the first mortgage but is agreeable to another secondary lender assuming the risk Amorti amortization and term a fully amortized a loan is a mortgage loan with specific specified schedule payments which includes principal and interest that a borrower will pay over a designated period of time, period of time until the maturity date when the loan is paid in full partially a more amortized uh, amortized amortized mortgage in a partially amortized mortgage the more the borrower makes payments of principal and interest but these installment payments are not sufficient to pay back the total principal amount at the end of the term therefore a final payment of the mortgage at its maturity date would be required to pay off the debt in full this is all this is known as a balloon payment a term uh, the mortgage term is the length of the time the borrower is committed to the lender the mortgage will have a specific specified uh, interest rate payment schedule and the privilege associated with the term with it for the term uh, this is lesson two so the loan to value ratio is a term used to express the ratio of a loan to the value of the property the amount of the the amount of the mortgage is divided by the value of the property uh, to provide a ratio which would be expressed as a percentage moving on fixed rate versus variable rate mortgage a fixed rate mortgage is a mortgage in which the rate of interest does not change throughout the term of the loan and then a variable rate mortgage is a mortgage in which the interest rate is adjusted periodically to reflect to reflect market conditions moving on uh, repayment options there's interest only interest occurring interest paid specified principal blended and more amortized um, I highly suggest you read these because these are a little bit confusing covenants a mortgage a mortgager a mortgager god if I can't pronounce this right please forgive me uh, a mortgager makes various promises to the mortgagee these are clearly identified in the lenders uh, standard charge uh, terms or statu statutorily set out in provincial legislation under the mortgage act there are certain covenants that will apply to every mortgage registered these are known as implied covenants which are different from the lender specified covenant speci specific covenants found in their set of standard charge terms first implied covenants uh, are listed below 
I highly suggest you read these. <laughs> yeah, go over that yourself. I'm gonna move on to the next uh, page. Yeah, so privileges, there's prepayment, renewal, transfer, postponement, and discharge penalty. Mortgage default is defined as a failure to fulfill a promise or obligation. A mortgager will be in default if they fail to satisfy any of the covenants in the mortgage. Legal remedies for a mortgage default is foreclosure, judicial sale, quick claim deed, payment, possession, and power of sale. So yeah, this is lesson two. I believe this is it. So let's move on to lesson three. Basics of uh, basics of mortgage funding is a lender is an individual, a financial institution, or a public or private group that provides funds to a borrower, mortgager, with the expectation expectation that the fund will be repaid. Okay, so let's move on to lesson three. We already talked about this. More uh, lesson three is about mortgage approval and mortgage specialists. Uh, same thing here. There is. Uh, nothing to just congratulate you for reading all this so let's uh, summarize it see if we can find any cool or useful information mm -hmm. no nah. no nah. okay lesson three basically I don't know just extra reading I guess mortgage qualification process so basically apply process appraisal underwriting closing documents pre-qualifying wow literally just a circle going around okay we get it let's skip this uh, pre-qualifying for a mortgage is the first step in the process it can be useful as an estimate of how much a buyer can afford to spend on a house however it is not use not as useful as pre-approved mortgage Pre-qualification is based on the borrowers providing information to the lender without any information having been verified or confirmed. Gross debt service and total debt service. Gross, not gross, gross. <laughs> the GDS ratio represents the maximum uh, percentage of a borrower's gross, gross income to be al allocated to the principal, interest, and property tax payments. The gross debt, the gross debt service ratio may include heating costs. A borrower, a borrower's currently mer current monthly mortgage payment is the primary expense. Other expenses may include monthly property tax payments, home insurance payments, and utility ba utility bills. The total monthly expenses are divided by total monthly income to calculate the GDS. Okay, you can read these. There's a lot of math questions here. You can go through that. Moving on to lesson four, because this lesson was whatever. I didn't like it, to be honest. Let's move on to lesson four, see what they have to say. Mm, rules of lawyers and third party provider, third party service providers. Uh, sorry, not rules, role. Hmm. I guess okay this basically just talks about what third-party professionals do I'm pretty sure we all know what a lawyer does and what a uh, what these people do and what they charge us okay we get it so lesson four was basically the summary of lesson one um, module summary let's go over it see if we miss, missed anything so seller expense, just to recap everything, uh, there are several additional expenses that a seller may incur during the selling process, which includes legal fee, brokerage remuneration, unpaid property taxes, third party cost, and if, ap if applicable, capital gains tax and HST. Uh, similar things with, with the buyer. And then mortgage basics, a mortgage is a claim or encumbrance upon the property given by the owner of the property to the lender as, a, as security for money borrowed. Uh, there are various fundamentals of a mortgage that you as a salesperson should be aware of, such as types of mortgage, amort uh, amortization, uh, term, loan to value ratio. We've already talked about that. If a borrower is in default, various legal remedies may be used by the lender 
These include foreclosure, judicial sale, quick claim deed, payment under <coughs> excuse me, payment under personal covenant, and possession of the property by the lender, and power of sale. Mortgage qualification process. And the two main categories of mortgage loans are high ratio, in which the loan to ratio loan to value ratio is more than eighty percent, and con conventional in which the borrower's down payment is 20% or more. There are several costs associated with, associated with mortgage, such as a mortgage default insurance premium, mortgage brokers, uh, fees, legal fees, and appraisal fees. Uh, mortgage qualification include, involves several factors, such as down payment, appraisal, employment stability, and credit check. A lender determines a borrower's qualifications by determining their GDS and TDS ratios. Pre-approval is a process that a lender uses to qualify borrowers for mortgage. Mortgage commitment is a letter from the lender agreeing to make a loan uh, subject to satisfactory title and other conditions specified in that commitment. And then the role of a lawyer and other third-party professionals. While most legal involvements, involvements is focused on closing uh, process, legal opinions and guidance can be vital in, matter, in matters relating to the listing process, drafting of agreements, and real estate negotiations, uh, particularly uh, those involving complex residential properties. A lawyer performed various searches and investigations of um, the subject property related to the matters such as tax arrears, condominium maintenance fees, zoning, and work orders uh, to protect the best interest of their client. Um, as you are obligated to provide conscious and competent service um, as per section 5 of the code to the seller and buyers. This includes knowing when matters may go beyond your knowledge and expertise. At this time you would advise the seller or buyer to involve a third party professional. So this was lesson, oh sorry, this was a module summary. So course 5, excuse me, course 2, module 5. Uh, it's not that big of a module, but I highly suggest you go over it yourself as well. Um, thank you, and I'll be doing module 6 next. Thank you. Have a good night. Stay safe.